Hi everybody, hope you're all okay. Um, another quick update. Well, say I always say that quick update, whether it is or not, I don't know. Um, I haven't done a massive amount. I've had um, well, actually, I've done a fair bit for me to be honest, but I've been getting a few more days working lately, a bit more regularly, so less painting time. Um, yeah, so um. I managed to get this uh, whole section done, which is good for me. Another section finished. This is a um, British Airborne HQ section based on uh, chain of command lists. Um, and these are first call miniatures, which are my first um, first ones there that painted. And I'm really impressed with them. Uh, yeah, really, really good. And I've got, uh, I've got a few more. Um, waiting to order some more stuff actually because um, for the LMG section I need another LMG team and some more uh, Bren gun, uh, not Bren gunners, um, some Sten gunners uh, and I'll, I'll, I want to make it up out of uh, all out of uh, first core figures so um, I'll have to order them and I've also seen some good sort of scenic sort of um, bits and bobs that they do because Chain and Command uses uh, jump off points I haven't played a game yet but the, I think the general idea is you have like a, a pre-game sort of manoeuvre thing where you it's like a patrol phase pretty much and you um, I can't really go into specifics of it because I haven't done it but you basically have like a patrol phase which um, sets up where your uh, troops can deploy from and you have these markers um, so you can use, use whatever you want um, jump off points and then um, first core do some really good um, parachute sort of scenic items so you basically got like a, an open parachute where blokes just landed um, and then you've got like a couple of collapsed and flattened parachutes and you can have like a a um, figure with them who's obviously you know like dragging the parachute about um, I thought they'd make good jump off appropriate ones for British Airborne so I'm going to get a few of these probably get the flattened parachute markers and um, they're just like resin uh, resin sculpts not sure how big they are, they're probably going to be like a, I expect to be like a 60 mil base, easily. Uh, but they look really good and they say really appropriate for um, British Airborne. So I mean, yeah, my next order from them when I, I mean I can, I can, I suppose I can afford it now, but I'm just still being, I'm still in that sort of cautious spending mode. So I basically want to get a few of those jump off marker things. Um, they also do... Um, supply crates, you know, dropped supply crates. So I thought I'd get some of them as well. Um, I might say I want a couple of stem gunners, but you have to get a pack of eight. But I'll always find a use for them. And LMG team. And I was going to get some casualty uh, figures. And probably anti tank gun as well. They do a. Uh, is it six or twelve round anti tank gun? So I'm going to get one of those, I think. I do have a warlord one, I think, but um, can't have too many, can you? So yeah. Anyway, that'll be what I'll be hoping to get next to uh, yeah do the provide the figures for the LMG section, and then that will be all the sections sort of uh, planned out. Uh, yeah, because I've done one rifle section already. I've got this HQ section, I've got another rifle section, um, about two thirds done probably, and uh, obviously the LMG section, so that'll be a chain of command, well the basic section's done, then I just want like the support options, which um, obviously I've done a Jeep already, I'm actually part way through assembling a 
universal carrier or brain carrier and the tetra tank um, then obviously there'd be the anti-tank uh, gun um, the other thing I'm thinking about is um, how to sort of model some airborne engineer sections because that's another one of the options but there just aren't any bloody engineer figures for airborne. I've seen like one one bloke from that's in a, a black tree design pack and he's got like a mine or something. There's no sort of mine detector uh, or wire cutter figures or anything like that. Um, so I'm now debating how to go about doing those. I mean, you've got flamethrower bloke here who's not actually part of this section, I just painted him because I had him sort of to hand. But yeah, I'm going to have to try and figure out how to try and model some engineers. I mean, I've got some plastic airborne, and I'm thinking of doing them all in berets, because uh, I was on a forum, well not a forum, on a Facebook group, and there's a girl there doing some, she's painting some airborne, does them really well um, and I sort of commented on some of their pictures and, and um, I think I mentioned engineers but she pointed out that they're on the berets they have like bronze cap badges which I didn't know so basically I'm going to do I'm looking to do the use a plastics wall or plastics give them all beret heads obviously with bronze cap badges and give them commando backpacks because they've got they're like bigger and bulkier and they look like they've got more gear and equipment and they've got ropes and all that kind of stuff on them so I thought if I do that that'll give them a bit of an engineering look hopefully I've also got a box of German pioneers and I'm thinking I'm gonna get a plastic frame of airborne out and get the bits for these German pioneers and see if any of the sort of wire cutting and mine sweeping arms would fit uh, these um, plastic airborne and if they do without too messing too much messing about because I don't I'm, I can't be asked converting I'm not I'm not really big on that uh, it takes me a long time just to paint them let alone fiddle around trying to make new figures so yeah, I'm going to see if that works. I won't glue them together, I'll just sort of you know, dry fit them. And if that works, I'm going to either buy a new box of Pioneers, because I think the Pioneer box is basically German infantry with extra bits. So if I just use the extra bits, I can still use the Germans as a, like for the early war Germans I was going to do. Or ask Warlord about buying just the um, engineer section the Pioneer stuff uh, separately. It would depend how much they charge to buy them separately, you know, if it's worth it or not. And if it's like a significantly cheaper than buying the box out, then I might, I'll probably do that. But yeah, so that's that's my thoughts there. I want to do some engineers, but I'm sort of not entirely sure how to do them. Apart from saying basically putting commando backpacks on them and doing them all in berries, that might have to do. Anyway. Yeah, this HQ section, it's uh, first core. Uh, these two blokes are the commanders. I can't remember what their titles are actually, but I'll have one of them. Nice stern gun, they've got like the plain helmet there. Looks almost like the um, German paratroopers' helmet, doesn't it? The other chap with a sten. This, uh, yeah, as I was saying, flamethrower bloke is not actually part of this section. I just did him because I had him sort of. Um, I just took him out. He'll be one of the engineers. You have like a flamethrower engineer team. I don't. I don't exactly know. It says like it's a three-man flamethrower engineer team. I don't know what the other two blokes are meant to be. I don't know if they just have rifles. So I might just give them rifles and commando backpacks. And they'll be his, uh, part of his team. 
I suppose. Yeah, so that's the uh, Spurs Core Flamethrower Bloke. Uh, sniper. Um, the actual list says Sniper Team. So I, I thought, well, you know, who would you have with a sniper? Maybe someone with binoculars, but didn't have anyone like that. I have seen one in um, War Games Foundry do some airborne, which I might buy. And they got some really good looking sort of different figures in there. They got blokes with binoculars and stuff, and some nice looking commander figures. So I might get those. I don't know. Don't think they mix with these because uh, I think Foundry are fairly small. I'm not sure. I've been around the mix with Warlord stuff and uh, Artisan and Crusader. But part of the um, command pack for this first, in the first core pack, you get a radio operator. Now, Chain of Command doesn't mention anything about radio operators. Um, and my two favourite figures in, well, in uh, World War II, any World War II range, are always medics and radio operators. Love them. I just don't know why, I just really love those figures. I always try and get radio operators and medics. Um, but say there's no actual listing for a radio operator. So I thought, as it's a sniper team, and I want a radio operator figure, he can just you know, be the other figure for the uh, sniper team. So, yeah, that'll be my sniper team, radio operator and the sniper. In the back here you've got... Uh, Piet team and a two inch mortar. The fences, you might remember, made out of plastic sprues. And I was looking at my fence out the back. I've got an old bit of fencing that backs onto the field. Oh, if you look anywhere, you'll see that a weathered, sort of untreated fence, or oh, whether it's treated or not, old fencing sort of seems to turn grey. And then um, you know, from when it gets wet, you get all that green, kind of algae look about them. So, I was just looking at my fence at the back and I thought, hey, I'll try and replicate that. I think it's come out alright. Um, I used, for that I did, um, was it MIG? Yeah, I've got a MIG grey, quite light grey. Then I gave it a Agrax Earth Shade or you could say Army Paint the Strong Tone wash. Then I dry brushed it again with the the MIG grey. And then dry brushed that get again with um Vallejo Deck Tan. Uh, deck Tan which is kind of a whitish grey. And then I just sort of dry brushed a bit of uh, Russian green on it to replicate the uh, sort of green watery algae sort of um, stains that the fencing ends up with. So yeah, I'm focusing a bit on the fencing. So that's how I did the fencing anyway. Um, yeah, there's the two figures, lovely. Really impressed with them. Well impressed with these first core ones. Um, really nice. Uh, as part of the set you get like the rifles. Which are just on this one, just put them on the floor, and then you get like a, a pack that and some of the ammo for the pit, which you obviously be using. So that's that there. Yeah, lovely figures, really impressed with them. So that's the pit, and then the two inch mortar. Again, you get a spare sort of pack thing there for the ammo. The rifles on this one are propped up on the fence. Couldn't do prop them up on the other one because the fence was leaning too much and I couldn't sort of fit them between the fence and the figures. Uh, yeah, well impressed with these first core ones. The tufts are a mix of Tajima and War Painter tufts. So yeah, that's that, the first core HQ section, really impressed with their figures, 
Um, yeah, as I say, when I can sort of feel a bit more confident about spending stuff on other than bills and food, I'll place an order. In fact, I might do it this weekend because I had like pretty much a full week of work last week, and the past few weeks I've had nearly you know full work week, full weeks work. So I think I can spare fifty quid to you know get a few bits to treat itself. I have to think about it. I stay. I've got in a real cautious spending mode. Um, so I was going to order it this weekend, but I probably won't. I'll probably dither about it and put it off. But anyway, that's them completed HQ section. Uh, next, just stuff in progress. It's the um, the second rifle section, which is all Crusader and Artisan and one Warlord figure. Obviously, they're the two. Uh, well, that's the commander and the Sten gunner, and the rest of them are, which I've finished earlier. The rest of them are in various stages. Well, they're all in about the same stage, really. It's just a couple have got the. No, they're all in about the same stage now. They're um. That's the warlord figure. I think uh, those two are. Crusader, restaurant is on. Um, yeah, these are leather camo done. Just got to highlight it all. Highlight, well, basically everything's had, apart from the skin. Their um, dems and smocks and the trousers are all um, ready for highlighting now. And then it'll be a case of you know, doing the webbing and the equipment packs and everything. So they're not too far off, to be honest. Um, I would say about probably two thirds done, I suppose. Um, yeah, so still pushing on with them, doing, doing quite well for me. Um, figure comparison. The um, I'll use a couple of painted ones, fully painted. First core a bit bigger. It's um, I don't know. Now you can see it's a bit bigger. But they're not so big that I'm. Um, Particularly bothered. I mean, if you like, say, do that, looking at them from above, kind of thing, you know, as you would be like playing a game. It's not that drastic, is it? Really? It's probably enough that I would keep the first core sections separate. You know, if I make up sections, it'll be first core or be their own. But it's not, I mean, when I first had them, I thought, bloody hell, big difference. But it's not really that bad. It's not really that much, I don't think. It's not messing around, moving the camera about. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad a, a size difference, to be honest. I mean, even the weapons don't look... Too, too different to me in size because that's often how you can tell that would be glaringly glaring difference in the weapon sizes but yeah it looks fine for me really um, it's not big enough that, that a big enough difference I'm gonna fret about it so um, yeah there you go well impressive first core stuff um, yeah I'm looking forward to buying some more I like the look of the medieval stuff as well. Um, quite fancy getting some of them, uh, some of their sort of foot knights or crusader type stuff. Um, not sure why, just like the look of them, fancy painting a few of them. Uh, and some of the mounted knights, they look, look really good. I might order, when I do place this, eventually place this order for the 
airborne stuff, I might get a couple of packs of uh, medievals as well. That's partly due to watching Nick's videos, Medieval Warrior. Drive me mental seeing this stuff because it looks so great and um, I'm trying desperately not to get into too many things because uh, I've been chatting with Leon quite a bit in comments and we're both looking at small scale stuff as well so that's my other sort of um, thing at the moment. I did buy some 15mm AWI, drifted off it, still there that I can't decide whether I want to carry on with it or not. The thing to do, I'm not sure, but I'm now getting the urge to do um, either 12 or 15 mil Wars of the Roses, because uh, I've mentioned to you all before, I think, that I want to do uh, Battles of St. Albans. And I'm thinking the best way to do that would be a small scale, and then get small scale buildings. I'm looking at a few different manufacturers of smaller scale stuff at the moment. The Callistra do 12 mil. I might order a few packs there, see what they're like, and they're quite cheap. And then there's like various 15 mil manufacturers. I was thinking Peter, Peter Pig Museum. Uh, that's the two I can think of off the top of my head, but there's quite a few. So I'll probably buy a couple of packs from each one and see which size I prefer and uh, yeah might be doing small scale wars of the roses anyway rambled on um yeah hope you all like that uh, that's yeah that's about it um yeah as always thanks to everybody watching subscribing commenting um yeah I'll uh sort of push on with this next section and that will probably be in my next video which hopefully won't be too long but uh yeah so take care everybody see you later